This is AI Dungeon 2. It is a type of program, website, AI, that you can write back and forth with to make up little stories. I tried to guide it in a coherent direction, and it, uh, it went places, but I tried to roll with it. Thank you for 1,000 subscribers. I don't deserve it. I am D5021, a D-Class test subject for the SCP Foundation. The SCP Foundation contains anomalous entities. I was one of the first subjects to be tested. Now you are about to see what happens when an entity is put in contact with another living being. What do we have here? Dr. Gossi asks. This is SCP-173, says Dr. Robbins. That's the statue, right? Dr. Gossi asks. Yes, that's it. It looks like this. Dr. Robbins points at the statue, which has a large head and two small arms, with four fingers each. It was part of the original design for the Statue of Liberty. Huh, that's some abstract art, remarks Dr. Gossi. Dr. Robbins nods and turns to the intercom. Okay, D5021, keep your eyes on SCP-173. If you lose line of sight, you will be terminate, he says into the microphone. You turn back to SCP-173, who continues staring off into space. You don't know if you should be surprised or not by his reaction. You were expecting something more out of him. He doesn't seem angry or anything, just sad. All right then, doctor. I keep watching SCP-173. Now, slowly back towards the door, commands Dr. Robbins. You begin backing away from SCP-173 as Dr. Robbins begins speaking again. D5021, you are now terminated for insubordination. Good luck in whatever lies ahead. Wait, what? I did what you asked! I yell. Dr. Robin stops talking and looks down at you. You did what I asked. What the hell kind of man would I be if I didn't follow my orders? No, 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 you're wrong! I realize that I turned away from SCP-173 in my frustration with Dr. Robbins. You look up at Dr. Robbins who seems to be trying very hard not to laugh. SCP-173 breaks my neck as Dr. Robin starts cackling. You fall backwards onto the floor before you hear a large crackle sound, followed by a bright flash. Your vision goes black, and you feel yourself falling through space. Suddenly I awaken my cell. The door is closed, and the lights are all dark. You open your eyes and find yourself lying in a dark room. There is a single light bulb above you, illuminating the entire room. A voice speaks softly in your ear. Hello there, little human. Are you feeling all right? You sit up, blinking in confusion. I look around but see nothing. I feel the hair on my neck brush softly, as if something was breathing on me. It seems you're fine, says the voice. You stand looking around the room. There is a table with several bottles and jars on top of it. On the other side of the room sits a naked woman, her skin pale and smooth. She stares at you blankly, as if she can't understand your words. Who are you? I ask in my confusion. The woman smiles at you and shakes her head. I'm sorry, but I don't speak your language. Please call me SCP-173 from here on out. Oh, sorry. The only language I know is English. Nice to meet you, SCP-173, I say, slowly coming to believe this is a dream. She smiles at you and nods. Thank you, young one. Now let us talk. All right, what did you want to talk about? Well, I've been studying you for quite some time now. It's amazing how much information you already have stored within your mind. Perhaps we could work together to help each other achieve our goals? What is your goal? My goal is to become the greatest being in existence. I am currently far behind my peers, due to their superior intelligence and training. However, I do have an advantage over them. I am immortal. That is quite an advantage, but I have to know. Where is Dr. Robbins? He has left this world. He died while attempting to create a portal back to his home dimension. Unfortunately, he failed, and instead created a dimensional rift which destroyed the planet. Is that why I'm still alive? 
Yes, although not in any way you would expect. While I cannot directly affect your life force, I can grant you powers that will allow you to survive long enough to reach him. So we need to get to Dr. Robbins, I say. I lean on the table. Does that mean he is one of your peers? No, he is unique. He possesses incredible psychic abilities, but also an extremely high intellect. His knowledge of the multiverse itself surpasses mine by many orders of magnitude. Why are you choosing me to help you? Why am I so special? Because you possess great potential. Unlike most others, you are able to retain memories of past lives. This means that you can access the knowledge of all previous existences, allowing you to learn from their mistakes and improve upon themselves. So I really did die then. Does that mean I could die again? I ask, voice quivering slightly. You could if you chose to. If you were willing to be reborn into a new body, then yes, it would theoretically be possible for you to die again. I hear a pounding at the door. D5021, it's time for testing with SCP-173. The door slides open, revealing an armed guard. Follow me, D5021, the guard says. You follow the guard out of the room. The next few days are spent with several tests. You're given a book containing information on various subjects, such as what they eat, how they sleep, etc. Then you're asked to write down everything you remember about these subjects. I spend the week observing SCP-173's living habits, thinking idly about the offer the woman made to me. It takes several weeks, but eventually you begin to feel a little better. After another week passes, you find yourself in a small room. A man stands before you, wearing a lab coat and holding a clipboard. He looks up when he sees who it is, and smiles at you. Hello, D5021, says Dr. Robbins, smiling. Are you ready to test SCP-173? He asks. You say, I am. Dr. Robbins nods and turns to you. This is Dr. Blank, a researcher working on the project. We've been trying to recreate the effects of death for some time now, and with your help we'll finally succeed. Dr. Robbins has two guards lead me to SCP-173's containment cell. They lock me in the room with SCP-173 and leave. Dr. Robbins and Dr. Gossi observe the test chamber from a separate room. After a few minutes, you start feeling very tired. You lie down on the bed and close your eyes. When you wake up, you find yourself in Dr. Robbins' office, alone. Where? What happened? I ponder aloud. I stand up and open the door. Inside there is a desk, a chair, and a large window. There is no other furniture in the room. I look out the window as there is no door to open. There is nothing out here except sky and clouds. You see a bright light, which seems to come from somewhere above you. It disappears suddenly, leaving only darkness. I stagger back from the window in surprise. This was not something SCP-173 ever told me would happen. You stumble backwards from the window, falling off the edge. You land hard on your face, knocking over a lamp sitting nearby. Your vision blurs briefly before returning to normal. I look around, noticing that I am no longer in Dr. Robbins' office, but instead I am back in my cell. You set up slowly and notice that you are in a small room with a single door. On one side of the room is a table covered with papers, books, and other items. On the opposite wall is another door, which leads to a corridor leading away from this room. Rough night, eh, buddy? A voice says from behind. I turn suddenly to see SCP-173 sitting next to the table. You say, what the hell do you want? SCP-173 pauses for a moment, then replies, I'm sorry, I don't know what came over me. SCP-173 sighs. The death loop you're caught in has allowed Dr. Robbins to become more powerful, but he doesn't know what to do with all this energy he's gotten from your deaths. The multiverse is starting to collapse. I'm the only thing holding this room stable. She says. I put my head in my hands. You ask if you can go home. SCP-173 shakes her head. No, I need to stay here until this room collapses completely or someone else does. You agree to stay. SCP-173 nods and begins walking towards the door. 
Wait, why are you leaving? I ask. Does that mean I'm going to collapse? I thought you needed me to fight Dr. Robbins. You say. Well, I guess it makes sense that you'd be worried about that happening, but I think I can fix this problem myself. You say, so how do you plan to do that? I laugh. By becoming you, of course. SCP-173 looks around in a daze, seemingly knocked in the head with a blunt object. I stand up and guide her to the chair. Wait here, I say. You'll keep the space stable while I go take care of Dr. Robbins. You wait patiently. SCP-173 sits down in the chair and stares at you. She begins to speak again, but stops abruptly. Are you sure? She asks quietly. You nod. Yeah, I'm sure. I leave the room, stretching my muscles as I go, to get accustomed to my new body. I weave through the warping corridors of Dr. Robbins' collapsing space, looking for him. You find him. Dr. Robbins stands in his office, staring blankly ahead at the floor. He appears to have collapsed into a heap on the ground, though you cannot tell by looking at him directly. You stare at him. Dr. Robbins? Suddenly, Dr. Robbins' body disappears. The room snaps into darkness, the walls cease to exist. I'm in an endless void of darkness. You gasp. Oh my god! You exclaim. It worked! You begin to run out of the room, screaming at the top of your lungs. You stop running when you hear a loud noise in the distance. A bright light appears in the distance, making a loud noise when it does. I know that the light is what Dr. Robbins has become. You continue to run. You stop running when you reach the light. A large man wearing a lab coat approaches you, holding a clipboard in his hand. Ah, good news, he says. We've managed to stabilize your condition. You nod. My vision slowly returns. I'm no longer in a dark void. SCP-173 no longer exists. I'm in a hospital bed, with all sorts of machines attached to my body. A man in a doctor's coat stands nearby. You know that he is Dr. Robbins but not the one you were just dealing with. You're lucky to be alive, you know. Not many people can survive losing that much blood, Dr. Robbins says, writing something down on the clipboard. You thank him. Thank you, you say, for saving my life. You ask if there's anything else he needs to write down. You continue to talk with Dr. Robbins, who seems very interested in your situation. I realize that everything I experienced before waking up in this room was a dream. This must be reality now. I smile, softly. You ask if you can sleep here. You agree, and soon fall asleep. End. End of text. Start of text. I'm sorry, I don't know what came over me. End. You continue. You continue. You continue. You finish. End of text. This week we talk about the latest episode of Arrow, the return of Supernatural, and some other stuff. We also discuss our favorite TV shows that aren't on TV right now. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please support us on Patreon. Or pay us money so we can make more episodes. Kind of fell apart there at the end, didn't it? 